Hello everybody, my name is Paul Edmonds and I'm Head of Research for the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust and I'm joined by Professor Sir Stanley Wells, who is the Honorary President of the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Stanley, as many of you know, is the leading Shakespeare scholar in the world. He has produced many books. He's a general editor of the Oxford Shakespeare, the Penguin Shakespeare, and in the last 12 months um, he's published great Shakespeare actors from Burbage to Branagh and William Shakespeare, a very short introduction both for Oxford University Press. It's our pleasure to welcome you to this conference in Yerevan. Very sorry we can't be there. It's been an astonishingly busy 400th anniversary year here in Stratford, and we're just going to reflect on that a little um, and see where that leads. Stanley, when you think about the birthday celebrations back in April, what do you most remember? Here in Stratford, well, it was wonderful to have such international representation, wasn't it? To see the streets full of people from many different nations, to see their flags flying, to watch the procession as it w wended its way through the streets up to the church, to Holy Trinity Church, where Shakespeare is buried. We had the Poet Laureate laying a wreath we on had the grave. The Laureate, indeed. Carol Ann Duff, Dame yeah, Carol Ann Duff. Dame Carol Ann. We had wonderful speeches at the, at the luncheon, including uh, and readings by Dame Carol and Carol Ann, and also by Wendy Cope, the poet, who read a specially commissioned poem, commissioned by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. There was the Royal Shakespeare Company's gala concert. Yes, that was a great event, transmitted throughout the world on screens, in which Prince Charles actually spoke a line of Shakespeare. Uh, and then after that, there was an opportunity to visit the grave by candlelight. Yes, that was very moving. Church. That was very touching and moving moment, wasn't Late it? Late in the evening until midnight, and 3,000 people queued up to yes, pay their that, respects that to Shakespeare. It was very touching to see the Shakespeare's grave by candlelight on that wonderful occasion. Prince of Wales is in town, so he went to the Royal Shakespeare Theatre to see the gala concert. He also visited the site of New Place, which is a special project for the Birthplace Trust. Yes, we had the uh, opportunity of greeting him there, having a chat with him on site at New Place. Tell us about New Place, because you've been so much involved Well, New Place it. is the big project for the anniversary year for the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. We've represented the site of Shakespeare's lost home, which no house has stood there since 1759. And over the last five years, we've led an archaeological excavation of the site, which has yielded a lot of information about the size of Shakespeare's home from 1597 mm. especially. We've been able to excavate part of the site that have not been looked at before. And from that, we've told the story differently of Shakespeare's life in relation to Stratford-upon-Avon, haven't we? Yes, we've been able to reassess his social status. We've been able to establish more clearly, I think, that he was, as I once said, the first great literary commuter, that he spent much time in Stratford-upon-Avon, invested heavily in the town. His family were, lived throughout his life in the town while he was popping to and fro. So we've, we've produced a brand new exhibition about Shakespeare in Stratford, yes. and we've presented the, the site of the house uh, with uh, specially commissioned artworks which evoke something that being a writer's home. Yes, and you've written a book and edited a book about that. With too. the two archaeologists. With the archaeologists. That's from Manchester University Press. Yes. Um, and new places opening in a short while. It'll be yes. open by the time people hear this conversation. Indeed, yes. It's, it's moving in about another two weeks or so, isn't it? And we've travelled the world too in, in relation to all this, haven't we? We've been yeah. in Stratford, Ontario. You did a lecture tour in America. About you went Shakespeare. to Cryova to Bucharest. I went to Bucharest and I gave a lecture there uh, for the Romanians who once awarded me very generously the Cryova Shakespeare <laughs> Prize. Yes, it's been extraordinary, yeah, but also we've been in working conferences, haven't we? That's true. So if we think about a couple of those as well, well, um, Verona. What was? What, why did we go to Verona? <laughs> we, we went to Verona. Oh, why shouldn't we? Go to Verona? <laughs> because it's lovely to go to Verona. But of course, we went there to take part in a conference about the the Veronese plays, about especially about Romeo and Juliet, and the two gentlemen of Verona, and the two gentlemen of Verona as well. This was and organised by um, Professor Silvio Bigliazzi from the Verona University. Yes, and and also people from the Shakespeare Institute, the University of Birmingham yes, attended. Yes. And it was a few days devoted to those two plays. Yes. And we saw productions, we saw productions of, the two of, of the two plays. And there was a special emphasis on the first quarto the of Romeo and Juliet. Yes. And, and Stephen Orgel first... gave that wonderful paper, didn't he? Yes, Stephen yeah. Orgel gave a great paper on, on the first quarto. And Silvia Migliazzi, one of the organizers of the conference, said, 
produced the first Italian translation of the first quarto of Romeo and Juliet, which she herself uh, directed, which she w was involved in the direction of. Specifically, also, there, there was the reflection of um, what Romeo and Juliet means to Verona yes. today in terms of its tourism, its civic identity, yes, yes. And, and how the city has really kind of claimed that Shakespeare play yes. for itself. In, in a very self-conscious, unashamed way, yes. uh, and which demonstrates the power of that story 400 years on, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The, 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 the great play, uh, uh, which is performed worldwide and which has such a great influence on the arts in general. And from Verona, a few weeks later, we went to, to Venice for another anniversary occasion, Indeed, which yeah. coincides with Shakespeare. Yes, there we were able to see the, the first ever performance in the ghetto, in the Jewish ghetto, which was celebrating its 500th anniversary, the first performance there of Shakespeare's play, The Merchant of Venice, in a very special production. It was an international cast brought together by a company called Compagnia de Colombina, um, from, based in, in, uh, in New York. Yes. Um, and they used the ghetto very significantly and there were five different Shylocks, weren't there? There were five different actors playing Shylock, multinational, and one of them was a woman. The idea, I take it, was to reflect the, the plight of the Jews, partly, the, the international plight, so that the play became, to a certain degree, a propagandist production. But it was also a very delightful production, very well acted, with lovely music. It was a great occasion. It received lots of international attention. There was, a, there was a mock, they called it the mock trial. Yes. They, they put Portia on trial, not, not Shylock, ah, well. uh, to find out whether she she legitimately could have been present in the court scene, and of course she couldn't because she was disguised, pretending to be something she wasn't. Yes, correct. Uh, yes. So, so she herself was, I think, um, had, had justice brought to bear on her. Yes, and we also took part. We also gave lectures in a course arranged by the university, the summer school of uh, Venice, in their summer school on the Isle of St. Giorgio. And then shortly after that, it was the World Shakespeare Congress. Yes. Now that very unusually took place in two places. Yes, it the was shared between the, Stratford and Avon and The places London. that went most to Shakespeare's own life. Yes. And, and we started in Stratford um, at the end of July and we went through to London the second half of the week and yes. it brought together the Royal Shakespeare Company, the Shakespeare Institute, University of Birmingham, uh, King's College London, Shakespeare's Globe and the whole thing was chaired by the Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust. Birthplace Trust. Yes. And over 700 people attended that event from all over the world. It was very moving. It to was extraordinary, wasn't it? What were the high points for you in the World Shakespeare Congress, Stanley? Well, some of the lectures were great. I love to hear Adrian Lester, the great black actor, who's done, been a wonderful Othello, for example, speaking about his art in a, in a most illuminating way. We had the novelist, Howard Jacobson, speaking about his recent novel, Shylock Is My Name. Now that's another anniversary project, isn't it, that you've, you've received from Hogarth Publishers. It's perhaps worth mentioning that project too, isn't yes, it? Yes, the, the Hogarth Publishers have commissioned a series of novels by eminent, an international team of eminent novelists, of novels based on Shakespeare plays, so that they've already produced uh, the, the Howard Jacobson's Sh Shylock is my name, name, Vinegar Girl by Anne Tyler Hayes on the Tale of the Jeanette Winterson's novel based on the Winter's Tale. Called Gap of Time. Yes. And then Margaret Atwood's was due out based on The Tempest. On The Tempest. And there's several more in the pipeline. Several more there. based on other plays, including Hamlet, Othello and King Lear. So the, the, soon. this recreating Shakespeare was the theme of the World Shakespeare Congress. Yes. How he's had an impact and continues to have an impact on um, different artistic endeavours, yes. whether that's poetry or novels or music, op opera, or a new opera, ballet yes, we're going a new to see. Ballet we're going to see now, based on the Tempers. That's done by Birmingham Royal Ballet. It's coming in October yes. by the composer Sally Beamish. Who, com who composed the music for an ode uh, to Shakespeare, which was performed here uh, around the birthday period. Yes, on the 22nd of April we restaged David Garrick's ode from 1769 yeah. in the church with Sam West as David Garrick. Yeah. And then Carol Ann Duffy wrote words for a new, as it were, it was called a Shakespeare mask, yeah. um, with local school children helping to perform yes. it. And the choir and orchestra of Ex Cathedra from Birmingham with Sally Beamish's music. Yeah. It was a great moment and it was uh, broadcast on, on Radio 3. Yes. Of course, the other thing that's um, distinguished this year is just the range and amount of media interviews. Yes, it is. Uh, the, B the BBC, international television and so on. Yes. They've all sort of been knocking at the doors of the Birthplace Trust and other organisations. Yes, I've Shakespeare by stories. Norwegian television, by Italian television. You and I took part in a religious programme, Shakespeare versus 
the Bible yes, uh, televised did. from question. years, and you've taken part in, in a number of other broadcasts, BBC radio broadcasts, some of which have been heard internationally. Yeah, um, so there's just been masses going on, and um, so we arrive at at this conference in Armenia. Yes. Um, if you were to say anything, Sandy, to, to the assembled audience now watching this, to, as it were, to wish them well, to encourage them, um, thinking about Shakespeare's internationalism and, and what we've noticed so far this year, what, what kinds of things would you, would you say, would you wish to encourage them with? Well, I should wish to encourage them with translations of Shakespeare, for example, with performances which engage with the culture of the country where they're being performed, which show the relationship of Shakespeare to other nations, which is so important nowadays. Uh, I, I'd wish them to go on studying and translating Shakespeare, and, and to go on celebrating Shakespeare, because yeah. Shakespeare is very much a cause for celebration, isn't it? And enjoyment. And enjoyment. And I think, I think more and more, you know, to think about where we start um, our love of Shakespeare, our engagement with Shakespeare, just to be really clear that for most people that's, that's just sheer enjoyment. I guess. Yes, Shakespeare was a great entertainer. Yeah. He was writing his plays uh, for an audience which went to the theatre hoping to be entertained, to be laughed, to be made to laugh, to be moved. They were intelligent audience, I think, because after all he gave them some of the most ambitious, intellectually and emotionally ambitious plays ever written. And this is one of the reasons why we go on celebrating taking interest in Shakespeare. He was a great entertainer, but he was also a great thinker, somebody who plumbed the depths of human experience in reproducing it in, in his plays. And this is why we go on celebrating him, go on having conferences about him, go on reading, go on writing about him, because he's always fresh. There's always some, as people change, as the generations succeed one another, Shakespeare comes to mean different things in each generation, in each country, which is why he's so perpetually relevant. So, oh for a horse with wings, as Imogen says in Cymbeline, because it would be great to continue this conversation with all of you and among all of you. Uh, have a great conference. All very best wishes to all of you. Wish we could be with you.